Hey guys, Radders here, and um, welcome to my 3D motion tracking tutorial. Um, I'm going to try and do this as clear um, and as easy and quick as possible. Um, but before we start, could I just make sure that before you leave, um, please like the video um, because I'm putting, I'm trying to help you guys out, and the least you could do is like the video. It helps my video get around, and um, of course, it, then it can help other people trying to 3D motion track as well. So um, yeah, please just. Um, any questions and all that just please leave in the comment section but please do like the video um, it means a lot okay so we're just going to jump straight into this um, the programs I'm be using are Bougie 4.1 simply because it's the most accurate in my opinion um, every time I motion track in Bougie 5 um, it, it doesn't seem to work as well so um, yeah I'm using Bougie 4.1 and I'm running that via Parallels desktop because I have a Mac um, it's Windows compatible, so you wouldn't have to worry about that if you're using Windows. If you are using Mac, then just get the free trial of Parallels. Um, also, I'm going to be using a Cinema 4D R13 and um, After Effects CS5. Um, any version, of, of course, of Cinema 4D and After Effects is fine. Okay, so first of all, you want to import your um, cinematic. I'm just going to be using a cinematic from a friend's editing pack. He's a really sick editor, so go check that out. It'll be on the annotation. On, an annotation will be on the screen. <clears throat> Once you've imported it, you want to just uh, hover over this uh, composition button and it makes its own composition that matches the project, uh, the file, sorry. Um, just drag out so there's no, just scale it up so there's no black edges. Um, and then find where you want to start your cinematic. I'll probably start mine here. So, um, Command Shift D or Control Shift D if you're a Windows user to split the layer and then just bring it down. Um, the cinematic I'm using will be in the description by the way so I'll probably just use it till there so just again split the layer and then click N to end the composition so it brings this little thing down here um, next you want to right click the uh, composition go to composition settings and you want to change the frame rate to either 60 or 30 I'm going to go for 30 because I don't really notice the difference um, and because it's faster render but you do need to change it to either 30 or 60 um, then it's more accurate. So I'm just going to go for 30 because it's faster render. And then you want to add it to your render queue. So composition adds a render queue. Change the output module to PNG sequence. Click OK. And then you want to put it in a, a folder maybe on your desktop because if you just stock this on your desktop, um, you're going to have loads of multiple images on your desktop, which obviously isn't good. So just stick it in a file, as you can see, I've already rendered one out called PNG Sequence. Um, just make a folder, PNG Sequence or whatever, uh, double click and then click save in there. Um, as you can see, I've already done mine for time purposes. Um, so then once you've select the destination, just click render and then come back to the video when that's done. Okay, um, the next step is to import your image sequence into Bougie. So open up Bougie and click import sequence and then just find where you put your PNG sequence um, so yours will probably be in maybe your desktop mine's in my administrator folder All right, once you've found it and you've found every single image you want to click on the one with the zero um, before the dot PNG and that's the one you want to click open on and then click apply and then close and now you can see our image sequence, PNG sequence is in Bougie so now you want to hit setup, edit camera, and you just want to f change the frame rate to whatever um, frame rate you rendered out in, in After Effects. So mine was 30, and then click apply and then close. Okay, it doesn't actually make any difference, I don't think, um, at that very time, like to your image sequence just by changing it. Um, next step is track features. You just want to click that. Um, if your floor or wherever you're tracking, maybe onto a wall, if it's quite a dull a dull wall, <laughs> um, like it's just the same colour, like as you can see here, it's got a lot of paper on the floor, um, so it will be plenty for the track points. We'll be able to track something if it was just a maybe, just a plain wall like this one here. Um, it would be a bit harder for Bougie to track. So you might want to click it advanced and then put the sensitivity up so there's more track points. Um, but because I've got paper on the floor, I'll just leave it like that. And then click start and uh, this may take a few minutes so I'll come back when uh, mine's done okay so you can see mine is just finished tracking um, what it's done is just made um, 
it's just set different track points on my uh, image sequence. Each frame has a different set of track points, and it is properly it looks good enough to track already. Um, the next point you want to just hit um, camera solve, and then tick optimize camera path smoothness, and then click start. It's just going to um, it's going to turn some of these into uh, circle track points, and um, yeah, so then we can set our scene geometry. So that will be really quick. So as you can see, um, next thing you want to hit is scene geometry, and you want to push add chord from hint, and you want to change the type to an x axis. And the x axis, in case you didn't know, well, um, it's the bottom line on a graph, so it will represent the uh, floor in your scene. So um, we'll just say maybe go to the uh, middle of your um, sequence, so you know that you can see where you want your track point. So I want mine maybe where the shadow is, so we'll just do it from there to there. Uh, hold control um, to select two track points, and then once you've select two track points, you just want to hit connect to selected, and that will connect to those two track points that you've just selected, and it will connect it and make it seem as if it's the x-axis. Okay, so you want to add another chord from here, and you want to change the type to uh, and z-axis, and this is uh, front to back, so um, just put it going through your x-axis, so I'll just do it maybe at this one to that one. Um, that seems good enough for me. So connect to select it again. I want to add one more and then change the type to origin. And it will be the center point, so it doesn't have to be dead on the center, um, but it's just good enough really. That's about the center. So then again, connect to selected, update chord frame, and then close. So now what that's done, it's um, is set all the axes. Axes is set like all the points, so your scene knows what's what now. Um, last of all, in Bouge, you just want to hit export, export camera solve or F12, and you want to change the export type to Cinema 4D. Scale the scene by 100, and then change the destination of your file to maybe your desktop. Just call it Motion Track One or something. And then click save, and as you can see, it's exporting our scene. And now it should be on our desktop. There it is. So now we would want to head into uh, Cinema 4D. So uh, either go to boot, uh, Cinema 4D, click a file open, or just double click the icon, and it will open up Cinema 4D. Uh, when this import thing pops up, just click OK. And as you can see, we have um, loads of different track points up here um, which don't move. And then we have our floor, almost looks like a floor plane, um, that is moving. And that's, um, it looks good from what I remember from the cinematic. So obviously you can't, there's nothing here, so um, you want to hit create a new material. You want to double click it, make sure color is selected, go to texture, and click the little um, arrow pointing to the right, and click load image. You want to find your PNG sequence, which you've uh, rendered out of After Effects and put into Buju. So you just want to click on wherever that is, and then click uh, on the zero, the one with the zero dot PNG, and then click Open. When this little thing comes up, the broadcast, you put No. Um, once that's done, then underneath this little right arrow, there's the image. You want to click that, and you want to hit Animation, Calculate, and that will uh, calculate every single image in that folder. Obviously now, still, we can't see anything, so you want to just add a floor, um, a background and a floor, so just click that icon, then background, and then add again a floor, and just drag this material onto your floor and your background. When you drag it onto your background, you'll see it's um, there, and the, tr the floor is tracked, so it looks good, and then drag them through it onto your floor as well. Um, when you've dragged it onto your floor, click the icon, the material icon onto the right of the floor and change the projection from flat to frontal. And then right click the floor object, go to Cinema 4D Tags and then Compositing. Then untick the self shadowing and then tick Compositing Background. And now when you render that out, you know, the floor will be transparent. Okay, so now we want to add a text object. So you want to go to MoGraph. Mo text, and there it is. Which want to scale it up? Um, you can either click on the mo text itself and uh, put the height up. I just find it quicker if you just click this square one and then drag it up. 
I think that that should be fine about there. You want to also possibly put it up a bit more because it's actually spawned into the uh, floor object so when you render it out you won't be able to see the bottom of the text but if you drag it up that'll be fine. Okay now we want to just change the uh, name of it. I'm going to call this uh, motion track maybe. Yep. Um, maybe make that a bit smaller. It's a bit big. Yep. Also I want to drag it over. You can move this around just obviously, obviously not too much and it's still motion tracked. Um, you might want to change a font, so change a font, it would just be default, um, this one. Um, I didn't really want to read that out, it's slightly embarrassing if I got it wrong. <laughs> we just click on it, it sometimes it takes its time. Um, I use Lobster 4.1 for some of my edits, it's really good. Um, just, I try to keep it original, so I shouldn't have really mentioned that. But I'm sure I can find a different font if loads of people start using it. <laughs> I'm sure they won't, but, uh, I'll just use a normal one, um, so I'll, I'll just use Lobster. Okay, now you can see it says motion track. Um, to be honest, it looks a bit dull, so I'm just going to put the depth maybe to 110. Just by clicking the Motex and changing the depth manually. So now that's got a bit of depth to it. It's more 3D. I want to put some um, like a. Uh, I want to smooth the edges. There we go. Um, so to do that, you just want to click ca uh, caps, and then where it says start, just change it from cap to fillet cap. And then just put the steps up to maybe 4 and put the radius down to uh, 15 or so, maybe 14. And now that's got uh, rounded edges. I'm just going to see how long we've been recording. 11 minutes, that's fine. Okay, so um, yeah, that looks good. Um, if you wanted to do um, the back of the text, so it's rounded, you just, as it says end, just imitate what you've done here. So just put it down to 14 and put it up to 4. You won't really notice it if you're looking from a front angle, but if your text is, I don't know, spinning around, that's quite a nice thing to do. Okay, um, now we want to add a shadow, so um, if you want to add a light object, so by, just by clicking that, and it will spawn a light object. Now if you render that out, that would look atrocious. Actually, it looks kind of cool. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so you want to just put the light object slightly in front of it. I'd maybe go just past where your floor object is. Um, and drag it into the middle and then just drag it up that looks about fine there, maybe move it a bit more over there yep, yeah, that's fine and then you want to click the light object and then hit shadow, shadow map soft and now you can see we have shadow, so that looks really cool actually for a first try <laughs> quite a lucky try really, yep yeah, that's good okay so now that track that looks like it's on the floor um, the only problem is, is the colour of the text is the default grey white thing. Um, so you can either just search a material tutorial onto YouTube and find one. I'm just going to make. I'm just going to use a preset that's already in uh, Cinema 4D. Just by going to create a load material presets broadcast resources materials and then glossy, and I'm just going to use car paint glossy blue. Okay, and then just double click it and adjust it to my liking. Just change the colour or whatever. Um, I'll just leave it as blue and put the reflection up to maybe 45 and then just drag it onto my material and that is a really nice um, text actually um, it's what I use in Milo's Deadline episode 3 if you saw that um, but yeah that looks quite nice um, just see how much okay um, I'll do another tutorial uh, definitely tomorrow about um, masking um, I'll, if you wanted to maybe put this text behind the bus um, then you could obviously have to mask out the bus. I'll do a tutorial on masking if you wanted to do that um, but please do um, leave a like and a comment of what you want to see next time in my tutorials because it's a way for me to be active and it's a way for me to help you guys out um, so please do like, favourite and all that good stuff because it helps my video get around and of course I'm helping you so just help me out as well, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, anyway, uh, thanks for your time. I hope this helped and have a nice day.